This is an alternative way to determine if a point is a local minimum or a local maximum. Um, so we, we use the first derivative test. The first derivative test says that if a continuous function has a derivative that changes signs from either positive to negative or negative to positive, we know it's a local extreme and we can determine which one it is by which way the signs change. So if it goes from positive to negative, it's a maximum. If it goes from negative to positive, it is a minimum. The second derivative test is an alternative way of doing that. So again, when we're finding local extrema, we're, we're not going to forget about those critical points. Remember, the critical points are the potential what? Extrema, right. So the critical points are the only points that can be an extreme. Um, so we're, we're going to use the first derivative to find those critical points, but then we're going to use the second derivative at those critical points to determine whether that point is a minimum, a maximum, or neither. So let's, let's look at how we're going to do that. Um, let's, let's just look at this first one here first. Uh, if the derivative is equal to 0 and the second derivative is less than 0, let's think about what that means for the function. The derivative is equal to 0. What does that mean? It's a critical point. Okay, it, the slope is zero, it's going to have a horizontal tangent, right? You agree with that? So we know that at the point itself, at the point C, it's going to have, and I'm, I'm going to draw it within uh, a small range here, we know it's going to have a horizontal tangent. All right, now the second thing we know about this is that the second derivative is less than zero. If the second derivative is less than zero, what does that mean? Let me write this down. Okay, so we have a horizontal tangent, and the second derivative is less than zero means it's concave which way? Down. Down. So what's this going to look like at this point? Is it possible for it to look um, like this to the left? Yeah. Is it possible for it to look like this to the right? No, why not? Because that's concave up. So it has to be concave down, so to the right it has to look like this, right? So if it has a horizontal tangent and it's concave down, what does that mean? It's a maximum. Exactly. So um, that means that f of c is a, is it a local or a global maximum? It has to be local because we don't know anything about what's going on with the rest of the function. We just know what's going on at this point. So it has to be a local maximum. So this, like I said, is an alternative to the first derivative test. The first derivative test here would tell us that the function goes from increasing to decreasing at this point. The second derivative test, all we have to do is plug the c value into the second derivative, and that's going to tell us whether it's concave up or concave down. If it's concave down at a horizontal tangent, that means it has to be a maximum. Um, Alternatively, if it's concave up at a horizontal tangent, then what's going to happen? It's going to be a what, Ethan? It's going to be a local minimum. So if it has a horizontal tangent and it's concave up, as would be indicated by a positive second derivative, we could draw a picture of what that's going to look like. So at the point, it's going to have a horizontal tangent, but it's concave up, so it's going to be a local minimum. So we could use a second derivative test here to determine if uh, a critical point is a local minimum or local maximum. Now, I'm using the term critical point, but notice that both of these are not including all critical points. Why not? Which critical points are not included in, in these uh, theorems? Not endpoints. Yeah, the undefined derivatives, right? <coughs> why, why do you think those would not be included? Let me draw a picture for you. 
you say close? <laughs> okay, if, if the first derivative is not defined, more often than not, the second derivative is also not going to be defined. Um, and, and let's look at a picture here of what could happen. Um, let's say that we have a function that looks like this. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, the second derivative for this function is not defined. But let's look at the concavity of this function and just kind of see what's happening here. Um, is, is this part of the function right here concave up or concave down? It's concave up. How about this part? It is concave up. Even though it's decreasing, it's still concave up. Does everybody see why? Okay. Now, this is a critical point because the derivative is not defined. Now, like I said, the second derivative is also not defined, but let's just pretend that the second derivative is positive for the whole function because it's concave up here, it's concave up here. Let's just pretend for fun that it's concave up here. This is very misleading then because it's a critical point and it's concave up, which the second derivative te test tells us that that would be a local minimum, right? Yes? So... Does, do you guys see why the second derivative test doesn't work when the second derivative is not defined? Now, as, um, as we said earlier also, the, if the first derivative is not defined, the second derivative almost always is also not going to be defined. Um, so it, it's actually going to be something that you don't have to worry about. Um, when we get a critical point, the second derivative test isn't going to work when it's undefined, when the first derivative is undefined because the second derivative is also going to be undefined. And in that case, we're going to have to use what? Which test would we have to use to determine if this is a local minimum or maximum? First the first derivative test. Um, I will tell you that the second der derivative test is never necessary. You could always use the first derivative test. Uh, however, there are going to be times when the second derivative test is a lot easier uh, than determining um, whether the the derivative itself changes from positive to negative. Um, and so finding the second derivative and, and figuring out whether the second derivative is positive or negative will be an easier task. Um, so the second derivative is a good second derivative test is a good tool to have, uh, but it's not necessary because the first derivative test will, will take care of what we need. The first derivative test sometimes is necessary in cases like this. You won't always be able to use the second derivative test.